Hello, everybody. This is Game God Fluent, and I'm very excited about today's episode. This is episode one of a new Let's Play. Uh, if you've been following my channel, you may know that I've been playing Age of Fear 3, The Legend, through the Dryad campaign. That also features a Dwarven campaign. But I'm going to be playing Age of Fear 4, The Iron Killer, which just came out today. Well, actually, I'm recording this on Monday. On, I believe it's Monday. It might be Tuesday. Uh, I got the game in advance, thanks to Les, one of the developers for the game. Shout out to you. Uh, yeah, I got the game, and I will be posting this video on Friday. And that is when the game releases, April 30th. So you'll be seeing this on Friday, and the game will be released. So first things first. Uh, we're going to start a new campaign, but I want to head to the options menu. And this is something that I recommended to Les, and he implemented it right away, which is very cool. A colorblind mode. I had a hard time seeing uh, the two-hit percentage chances when you're trying to hit an enemy. It was in a deep red, and I couldn't really read it. So he added this mode, which turns out to white, and also the game will render all text with a high contrast. So that's very cool. In order to do that, though, we have to restart. So let's restart the game. And uh, yeah, I don't know which faction I'm going to be playing yet. We'll see. To be honest, I don't even know what two factions are in this game. Um, but we're going to find out together. <clears throat> okay, new campaign. The mystery of the Iron, Iron Killer... Angela the Vampire Hunter and her companion Nazel investigate the deadly iron kill killer. Will they succeed in unraveling the mystery? Or Sea People, open world. With their reputation as mythical monsters, the Sea People have ruled the waves for an eternity. As the land people refuse to keep to themselves, the time has finally arrived for their dry domain to enter the fold. Those unwitting souls who call this continent home had best make way. Powerful and versatile Naga warriors, weather manipulation spells, mermaid songs, weak versus ranged attacks. And that's an open world. So we're going to do the mystery of the Iron Killer first, I think. Um, I'm going to play on hard. Alright. A scene of disarray surrounds the pulverized remains of another victim. The Iron Killer has struck again. In a realm gripped by a mounting criminal presence, this brutal series of murders is the latest source of chaos. And behind each one, an iron golem serving some unseen master. To die by the hand of an iron golem is not a good death, although it could be argued the recently deceased deserve nothing better. Gang leaders, bandit kings, few would mourn their deaths. But what of the innocent victims caught in the middle? The roots of corruption run deep, and the question must be asked. Who will the Iron Killer target next? Anyone foolish enough to try solving the mystery will be putting themselves squarely in harm's way. This story, however, begins much earlier. All right, very cool. So first off, we're investigating the iron killer who seems to be killing and we're trying to solve the mystery who will he kill next and trying to find him so let's see what happens one peaceful summer night a sleepy fishing village is due to receive some unexpected guests Slithering in among the waves gently crashing on the moonlit shore, a swarm of serpentine silhouettes moves with a purpose toward the cluster of huts. Gliding silently over the sand and masked by the darkness, they close the distance undetected. The figure at the fore raises her curved sword into the air, a gleam of moonlight flashing across the blade. She points one by one at the shelters spread out along the beach. Its target set, the raiding party readies its weaponry and prepares to attack. 
These unsuspecting landwalkers deserve their fate. None shall be spared. Interesting. Welcome to Age of Fear 4, The Iron Killer. The next few levels teach the basics of the game and introduce our story. Play the introduction? Sure. Alright, so we see a familiar map. This is the same map, I believe, Age of Fear 3 uses. Very cool. And we have one quest, and it's Night Assault. Several units have the sleep attribute. Sleeping units cannot perform any actions during their turn until they wake up. Additionally, sleeping units' defense is zero. There are few actions that can wake a sleeping unit. Enemy unit stays close to sleeping unit. Altered alert distance is displayed when hovering over mouse point pointer over sleeping unit. No, enemy can quickly move beside sleeping unit without waking it up. Any player performs offensive action like attack, offensive spell, etc. No, not every spell is regarded as directly offensive. All units wake up at the same time, but they'll not be able to act immediately. Filthy humans! They rob our waters, now they take our young! Greedy land people, deceitful land people, they die tonight. Kill them all, find the eggs. What a... Okay, so... We're playing as the sea people. Sea diver fisher, naga. Sea diver warrior. Let's see what we've got here against a bowman, a footman, and a footman. So the odds are clearly in our favor. Let's see, Sea Diver. Sea Divers live in tribes that pursue their peaceful way of life along the shore, harvesting all that they need from the sea and keeping to themselves. Don't be misled by their fatty look and fishy features. If threatened, these creatures can be tough on land and at sea alike. So they're cold-blooded, ignores morale loss from allies' death, Unit finds inner strength in dire situations. They can parry, plus do defense, attacks only f affects only first melee attack, backstab attacks are ignored. And they're a sea dog, which they're immune to seasickness. Then we've got the Nagas. These many-armed servant people are best known for terrorizing sailors and settlements near water. These fearsome creatures are predominantly female. The vile appearance of a Naga can strike fear into the hearts of even the bravest men. So they have a double attack, two melee attacks per turn, enhanced armor plus one defense, enhanced weapon plus one attack, iron mind, immune to mind control, command, sleep, curse, enslaved or tamed, bribed, poison immunity plus two defense versus poison and acid, they're immune to poison and disease, they're regular, so they get upgrade level one plus one attack defense plus one base MP plus one base morale. And petrification, unit turns into stone with one HP instead of being killed. After battle, units with stone form are carried over. So that's pretty interesting. And then we have, which one was the Sea Diver Warrior? This one. Let's see if they have a different. These beings serve as the guardians of their tribe and have received combat training from a young age. With their, while their short legs don't bless them with speedy maneuverability, their stocky, sturdy builds make them especially well-structured for defense. Defensive stance, uh, plus two defense till the next turn, auto-activated at the end of an idle turn, cold-blooded, they can parry, sea dog, and spikes, attack two times, counter-attack, one damage, affects only melee attacks, skills auto-vected after each, lead, each melee strike on this unit. So let's move the warrior. As you can see, the text is now white instead of red, and I can read it 70%. Oh, quickly, get word to the village. They're coming in from the sea. Fools, we are the sea. Um, okay, there's more than we saw. There's a lady, peasant, another footman, a peasant, a bowman, a footman, and a chicken. Alright, let's move in. Oh, life is leaving me. Shut up and die faster. What a charmer you are. I 
and I want to check something um, in the options menu I want to make sure that um, auto collect after battle is on auto collect items okay alright let's end our turn Oh, the peasants are fighting. Sea Diver has received high morale. Units' combat values were temporarily, temporarily improved. High morale will be move, removed immediately if units' morale drops to or below base morale. Morale above base value decreases minus one per turn. All right, so we've got a peasant. Peasants make up the majority of the agricultural labor force in the kingdom. Peasants typically spend most of their life working their small plot of land, typically rented from the local aristocracy. They can run. Unit moves an additional distance plus 30% speed. Cannot attack after moving. Three turns cooldown. Cannot be used next to enemy. If they're stunned, frozen, or slowed, they can't run. And no melee. Cannot attack in melee. Let's check out the footmen. Footmen are the backbone of the king's army. They are equipped with a sword and well trained in its use. In times of peace, the footmen serve as the kingdom's militia. And the bowmen are the king's expert marksmen, and their reputation for precision and speed is known across the land. Often trained since childhood, they unleash a volley, a volley of arrows that can make even the most battle-hardened foes tremble. Shoot arrow long range, one damage range, and weak melee attack. Minus two attack. So we're going to have to get over to that guy. So let's get you headed towards him. Let's get you headed towards this one. Oh, I did not mean to do that, but it's been ensnared. Well, he's not bothering us this turn. Oh, why? Your lives became ours for the taking the moment you look, took from us. So far, we haven't taken any damage. Sea Diver Fisher has been blocked by an enemy. Shooters and spellcasters are very vulnerable to melee combat. As long as the enemy is standing next to your unit, the most of spells and ranged attacks will be disabled. Actions marked as unblockable can still be used even when unit is blocked. They're losing morale. Just try to stop. Cool sound effects that are some sound like new sound effects. We will spare the chickens. One of enemies has a stealable item. Enemies possessing items marked by a light brown bag icon. Items can be stolen if your unit has steel skill. Items provide various bonuses and unique skills for your heroes, and it's advised to collect as many as possible. Um, I guess you have an item. You have a healing brew, but we don't have anybody that can steal, so let's just... Battle has been won. Game will be saved in autosave folder. Before leaving battle, fallen units can be revived and carried over to the next scenario if you have the right skills or spells. Do you want to leave the battle? Yes. The vengeance of the sea people is swift, and the village lies in ruins. Even had they expected it, the villagers wouldn't have stood a chance. The marauding army from the depths ransack every home furiously searching for their pilfered clutch of eggs, but find nothing. Enraged, they show the townsfolk no mercy. Ma'am, there are no eggs. Landwalkers must have hidden them somewhere. Sold into slavery, my poor children. Burn it all, let no one live to tell the tale. Cathedral. 
moving forward to present day in the human kingdom, the tale continues in the sunlit majesty of the Millicent Cathedral's main hall. There, the High Priest and the Holy Council have assembled to recognize their latest graduate. Brash, fearless, and with a potent desire to purify the realm of evil, young Angela took an interest in hunting demons from a young age, after being placed in the care of the Holy Church. Father Jonat, the High Priest, was all too eager to provide her an upbringing and now having reached adulthood and the end of her training, he expects much in the way of service from his ward. Okay, so we meet Angela. Angela, my child, at last your edification is complete. The Holy Council has approved your nomination as Vampire Hunter. As of today, you are an agent of the Holy Church. Come, show me your gratitude with a little kiss. I've told you a million times, Father Wrinkles, your charms couldn't woo a goat, let alone a lady. Hand me the paper. A kiss? Hand me the paper. What a pervert. You're breaking my heart, child, after everything I've done for you. Oh? What of the nun I overheard you doing everything for last week? What's become of her? I, that is, the Holy Council and I, have decided Sister Marissa would be better off completing her divination with a new covenant. Somewhere, far west, where her light is sorely needed. Your convenience first. How typical to be cast away the moment you grow bored. Never mind that, you dallying swine. What's to be my first assignment? Dallying swine. I like it. Our heralds have reported strange happenings near Westland. We have reason to believe a vampire only recently turned is stalking the woods behind the cemetery. That's all, a kid bloodsucker? I was hoping for a proper challenge, not more lessons and drills. Oh well, let's talk bounty and I'll be on my way. Oh, such passion, with haste to Westland then. The bounty, you crusty boot. Oh child, must you be so cruel to me? The council has budgeted 100 gold pieces, a rich reward if I do say. 100 gold, huh? I'm going to pretend you didn't just try to cheat me out of the full payment. I want all of it, you fossilized crook. What? How dare you accuse me of such treachery, child? 500 golds. Don't tell me that purse you're hiding behind your back holds even one coin fewer. My darling, you're just far too astute for your own good. It's not your righteous arse on the line, now give it here. To the tiniest coin, you old miser. Enough teasing, take it. Two of our royal guards will accompany you. They will come back after defeating undead. Godspeed in laying this demon to rest. Now, please leave me to my prayers and study. I need to check those newly arrived apprentices. 100 gold pieces have been added. With a frustrated glare, Angela snatches the coin purse from the High Priest's outstretched hand. She storms out the back door of the hall, cuts through the church garden leading to her dormitory, and hops through the open window adjacent to her bunk. In anticipation of her inaugural hunt, she had already gathered the requisite stakes, crosses, and assorted holy accoutrements handy in close quarters confrontations with the undead. And one last check of her bag is all that remains. Angela's marksmanship with a pistol tends to keep threats at a safe distance. But if her training has taught her anything, it's to be prepared for the worst and prepared for it near. With the last strap fastened on her satchel, Waves of memories from long ago suddenly crowd her mind's eye. All right, so Angela uses a pistol. Very cool. No, Daddy, no. My darling Angela, it kills me to do so, but I need to leave. You're not safe with me. I am a beast and the hunters will never stop. You're not a beast to me. Don't go. Don't go. It's for the best, my child. The Holy Church will protect you. They'll provide you the life I'm no longer able to as a monster. I'll live with you in the forest, Daddy. I'll learn to fight. I can help protect you from the hunters. Please don't leave me. 
Angela, no. With me, you'll be in constant danger. How it pains me for this to be true, but with this horrible curse, I can't be your father anymore. No, 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 no. Daddy, no. There's no choice. I refuse to place you in peril any longer. You'll be safe in the care of the Holy Church. You're strong, Angela, and I'm so proud. Never forget that I love you. I'll be keeping watch from the woods. Promise you'll live your life without fear. Promise you won't ever give in to evil. Yes, Daddy, I promise. My beautiful girl, I'll miss you so much. I haven't given up, Dad. Six years are gone, and now the evil in this world better be ready for me because I sure as hell am ready for it. Gunther is the father of Angela. That's interesting. Gunther, if you saw my Age of Fear 3 Let's Play, was in um, Age of Fear 3 as an expansion character. And as of this date, I have not completed his expansion quest. So if you guys want to see that, head to my Age of Fear 3 Let's Play. But let's head to the Vampire Crypt. The day has turned to dusk. By the time Angela and her royal guard escort arrive at the gates of the Westland Cemetery. With her keen eyesight, Angela spies movement. What might pass at a distance as grave diggers roaming the rows of tombstones. Closer scrutiny reveals the reanimated dead, still caked in dirt from being recently unearthed. Unaware of the party's arrival, the freshly raised zombies wander to and fro, murmuring gibberish amongst themselves. Instinctively, Angela draws her pistol and locks onto the shambling gate of one of the ghouls through the wrought iron fencing between them. Her eyes fixed on the nearest undead, she cautiously approaches the cemetery gates. With an assertive push, the creaking hinges give way to the sounds of shuffling and groans. Cool. Look all around, the dead walk. There's an evil presence, all right. These decomposing goons are just a symptom of something bigger brewing out here, though. The vampire's crypt must be this way. Follow me and keep close. Brains. So hungry. Boss promised brains this morning. Shall we strike one or two of them down? You know, to ensure our blades are sharp. Maybe Boss Vampire got a big brain. We could, um, split it? Shh, secrets and vampire brain. Oh, no good. Maybe tomorrow we find a nice brain. Long hours and no rations. These stiff stooges can't catch a break even in death. Hey there, rotters. Big bossy vampire jerking you around, huh? Just a thought, but if you wanted to even the score, showing me the way to his hideout would really tick him off. Ooh, intruders. Lady brought her brains. Sure did, and I'm not sharing any with you. Let's find out how much of your own you have ro rattling around up there. Hold still while I send an exploratory bullet your way. No, Angela's a gunslinger. She can fire a volley of bullets at multiple enemies in the same turn. Keep Angela close behind your warrior's line. Okay, so let's check out our various units. We've got Royal Guard and Angela, the Royal Guard. Royal Guards are an elite unit of veterans tasked with the protection of the royal family. They not only serve in close proximity to the monarchs, but may also be sent to active duty on the front lines. They have knife throw, one use short range, one damage range, um, defensive stance, plus two defense after an idle turn, shield bash, minus three attack, but target is stun, minus three attack, minus 50% speed till the next turn, affects only the strike, cannot be used after a unit moves. They have steel, steel item, potion, or gold from an enemy unit. Relics, cursed, and quest items cannot be stolen, can be used after a unit moves and is near an enemy. Stolen potions are equipped immediately if the unit's inventory has capacity. Darkness, minus four attack ranged, undead constructs. So this is, darkness is due to the, uh, us being on a map that has darkness. It's dark out, basically. Enhanced armor, enhanced weapon, and veteran. 
Um, see, this is the darkness. Yeah, minus four attack range affects all units on battlefield. And then we've got Angela the Gunslinger. The Vampire Hunter is a brave and greatly skilled maiden with an unrivaled hatred for vampires. These ladies are often from rural towns and villages plagued by vampires. She's a hero, so she's got all the things a hero has. Plus one team size, plus one base HP if the battle is lost, if the army loses the hero. Immune to mind control, command, fear. Unaffected by being surrounded. Unaffected by racial animosity, morale penalties, ignored when determining racial animosity, morale penalties, only heroes can use artifacts and special items, upgrade your heroes early in the campaign for better loot, plus two team size of veteran elite, multi-fire gun, multi-target medium range, targets up to three enemies, one damage ranged, charm trait, plus two defense versus knights, soldiers, barbarians, and pirates, it, uh, unit doesn't break all team morale bonuses like all holy, all plants. Starkness and Iron Mind, which we've seen. And we're fighting a skeleton. Skeletons can be summoned forth by necromancers to fight their foes. While not the sturdiest of fighters, they feel no pain and are tenacious melee attackers. The only way to stop a skeleton is to knock it to pieces. They have projectile re resistance. Only critical hits will cause damage. Affects ranged attacks. Does not protect against attack or spell if the unit is vulnerable to it. And they're undead, so they get a plus two defense versus cold, immune to poison, mind control, command, unaffected by morale, lower chance of permanent wounds. Undead beings are dead, but not gone. They walk this realm and reanimated by a foul magic. Um, we've got zombies. A zombie is a dead human that has been brought to back to life by the power of necromancy. Since zombies feel no pain and are compelled to fulfill their master's will, they make for formidable and relentless foes. They're undead and got some gold on them. All right, so let's move you down here, and you down here, and uh, that'll be good for now. What potions do you have? An elixir of swiftness, plus 30% speed and one defense for three turns, and a healing brew. Right, battle with special condition, darkness. You better stop running, mate. Grrr. The sound of crumbling bones. Is that ever satisfying or what? Gives me the heebie jeebies, personally. You attack that one. Oh. It's time to fight the bullet. Oh, she's got a southern draw. I did not see that coming. Alright, Angela can attack. Upgrade your heroes early in the campaign for better loot. Most treasure if randomly generated at the start of the campaign. Loot might vary between playthroughs. Let's attack you. And you throw your knife. Oh, you can't. All right, the new move up here. Some dice. Damn these unholy monstrosities. In the glow of these heavenly moonbeams, I shall banish thee from our earthly plane with a heart full of courage and a... Uh, swords, not words. Spare me the speech and get slashing, you royal blatherer. <laughs> yes, my lady. Okay, you move up a little bit. Missed a 90% chance. You're gonna wanna stay in my good side well, the gun show. Yikes. She's surrounded. You better start running, mate. Oh, boss gonna be really mad. Don't worry, I'll be sending him where you're going in a minute. Work it out between yourselves in the after afterlife. I'll start doing a southern draw for her. He's a dead one for sure. I'm 
Mama, Mr. Pack and Mama. Battle has been won. Angela's shredding gunfire and the royal guards carving swords leave the zombie mob as nothing more than a series of dismembered heaps. The day has fully descended into darkness as the party ventures into the haunted woods. From somewhere in the distance, the howling of wolves sounds out into the night, a chilling reminder that natural dangers too are on the prowl in this place. With the graveyard now clear of undead threat, Angela tours the perimeter of the fence and spots a suspicious break where the cemetery meets the tree line. The old oaks flanking this entry to the forest show signs of corruption, leaving little doubt that something sinister lurks deeper in this direction. Cool. Let's get him. The trail is a twisting, overgrown mess that would be challenging even in daylight. Angela stumbles over an exposed root and tumbles into a rotting stump, managing to stay upright but coming away briefly dazed. As she looks up and around to regain her bearings, a serendipitous break in the clouds throws moonlight onto the limestone facade of a crumbling mausoleum through the brush off to the side of the path. Angela vaults over the shrubs and finds herself at the heavy stonework door of a crypt. She presses her weight into it. The door gives way and a blast of musty air rushes out. With her pistol raised, Angela leads her party in. All right, deeper we go. <clears throat> Hello in there, any horrible creatures of the night skulking about? Oh, look at this, an adorable little altar, and just past that, a rather obvious false wall. A gentle push, and... What? Who are you? Leave this place or be killed where you stand. Oh, hi there. Sorry to intrude on your super secret hiding place, but it was so poorly concealed, I couldn't resist. You really must be new at this. Count Baby Tooth. God, you, you won't escape. My bite will drain you from the very last drop of life, little girl. Gum to death, how frightening. You're looking a little pale, are you sure you're up to this? Enough, for your insolence I'll force you into the ranks of my terror legions at the lowest rung. Enslaved, you'll watch in stomach churning horror as I usher in a terrible new tyrannical age and, and... Yawn. Geez, you're hardly worth a stake, but I have something special just for you. Those little chompers of yours are sure going to look lovely strung onto a charm necklace. Note, Angela equipped a silver pistol. It's a special weapon designed to defeat undead. Now, shoot this silly vampire to pieces. Alright, we've got a vampire, a zombie. A zombie, a zombie, and a zombie. Let's take a look at the vampire. Vampirism has been around as long as humanity itself, and it's not uncommon for a vampire to be hundreds of years old. Vampires need life essence to prolong their unnatural existence. They have a life drain attack, which transfers, transfers one HP to self. Vitalize, plus one attack, plus one base HP for three turns if HP exceeds base HP. Affects melee attacks and undead constructs and elementals aren't affected. They have 30% chance to resist negative spells, plus two defense versus magic and damage from all spells reduced by one but never zeroed. They're undead and he's carrying some gold. So let's shoot him. Oh, he's coming in. Ouch! What a brute. I'm a lady, goddammit! Your hero's been hurt. Angela, if it's your avatar in game, and battle's immediately lost if she is killed. Ah, oh, curse you, girl. You'll pay for that. Already have, Nightcrawler. These bullets aren't free, you know. Shot through the heart, now the blame. Dead vampire. Now we have a bunch of zombies to deal with. And Austin has been crippled. 
Oh no, not looking good for him. Austin has been badly wounded. Permanent wounds can only be cured outside of battle on the recruitment screen. Units with low hit points have a higher chance of being wounded. Alright, so let's... Hit that one. Kill that one. So far, so good. Oh. Interesting tactics. You better stop running, mate. Always a dead one for sure. Oh, use a dead one for sure. Always a dead one for sure. Don't cross me. Let Angela get the kill. Battle has been won. Any dreams this awkward young vampire might hold for a world domination are put to death as Angela delivers the kill shot and reduces him to ash. She kneels down to inspect the dusty remains of her recent mark. Just then, a draft whips through the chamber blowing the vampire's ashes into her face and sparking a sneezing fit that knocks her onto her hindquarters. <laughs> Rising to her feet and brushing the mottled ash from her person, Angela mutters a few curses before turning back to the chamber's exit. As she steps out of the secret cell, from the corner of her eye she spots a cloaked figure dart from the altar and into a shadowy alcove. Uh-oh, there's another one. <laughs> Who goes there? Oh, my apologies. I thought you were a vampire. Quite the opposite, in fact. The local vampire population is down a sire as of a moment ago. You've slain the vampire? Oh my, well done. Who are you, stranger? My name is Nazel. I'm a man of science. I came here in search of certain materials to aid my research into unnatural forces. I don't suppose the vampire left much ash behind, did he? As a vampire hunter, I can tell you there are a few legitimate reasons for someone to be seeking the ashes of a bloodsucker. And that small fry left barely a trace of it, I'm afraid. What little was left flared up my allergies. Better luck next time, Professor Baldsworth. <laughs> oh no, what a shame. I don't suppose I could tag along with you, Miss Vampire Hunter, to be first in line after your next hunt? The brave man of science is in need of my patronage, huh? And here I thought there was only one parasite in the joint. I don't need a scribe, but if there's nothing for you here, we may as well leave together. You might be surprised at what a scientist can bring to the table. It better be more than a flask you're packing, Nazel. I get the feeling these woods are full of unfriendlies, especially under a witch's moon like we have in the sky tonight. Noted. So it's decided. I shall join you. Thank you, Miss Vampire Hunter. This doesn't make us a team, Nazel. Carry your weight. Let's go. Nazel joined you. Nazel's a mage who specializes in controlling of elementals, though he also commands a variety of offensive spells. And a lot has opened up. While he is a powerful force when casting from afar, his combat abilities and endurance are low. He won't last long in direct melee. So we now have a whole map to explore. And we're going to check that out in the next episode. DLC, which we don't have uh, yet as of today, Friday. But I should have it soon. It's not made for early level characters anyway. There's a few battles we can take place in. Um, Smuggler's Den we can check out. Cathedral moves the story forward. It's got the purple mark. And these are optional side quests like the hungry wolves the ones with the book so we'll check that out next time um hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you'll follow along check out my age of fear 3 let's play too if you want to check out another game in the series another excellent game and i'll see you guys next time much love peace joy and light to you and hope you follow along for my adventure we're gonna have a lot of fun together 
The Adventures of Angela and Nazel. Uh, so long, everybody. <laughs>